The first tip is to always play the game on very hard difficulty, even if you're new to the game or new to FPS games in general. Let me show you why. First I'll set the difficulty down to very easy. If I would tell you that this game has pretty good comedy, you probably wouldn't believe me after what you just saw. So let's try the same thing on very hard. Now here's the second example why you should always play on very hard. Okay, check in the gameplay difficulty, very hard. Okay, see now, on very hard, the game pushes back against you so hard that every every corner, every hallway, every Every situation you have to use all the cover you got to survive the situation. And now it's really bad because I got them on the left and the right side. This is where the game really shines in combat. If you play it so hard, you actually have to think for yourself. And there's lots of strategic considerations like um, should I have gunned him with more ammo, with better weapons, more hand grenades? See, yeah, that. Notice I actually grazed, I actually grazed the, um, the potted plant and almost fell off. <laughs> and perhaps we can even see them actually retreating to, to, to a line further, that's further away, if I hit them right. What is he? Almost got me. Well, sometimes they're not just mindlessly rushing at me. Get it, we want inner wall heads, let's go. They're not approaching because I'm providing so much fire against them that they're actually trying to get away, at least hold the line against me. And that's amazingly sophisticated AI for a game where I don't expect it to be this sophisticated. The second tip is take your time with looting. Let me show you. You may be used from other games that there is always a chest at the end of a dungeon that where the good stuff is, and that there's always some some type of hinting system that tells you where the good stuff is, like a magic button that makes all the good stuff glow. Oh, that's different than stuff yet. Okay, you got some obvious chest over here, some credits inside. Let's go to the next room. Notice this chest is already positioned to catch your attention. So you go to the chest. Okay, that doesn't look like a chest that like there's something super valuable in it. So let's take a look around the room. Okay, what's on the table? Notice here weapons and a lot of cred sticks. Okay, what's on the other table? Nothing interesting, some is that cheese? And there might be items in the lockers. And then you might think, okay, there's nothing else in this room, so I can just leave. Oh, if you check this area. Oh, what's that? Stolen artwork. Yellow icon. That's extremely valuable contraband. Look at the press. And that's, I think, one of the, the big things that Bethesda always got right, especially in Starfield, is that it rewards you for spending more time in examining places for good loot. So don't just go for the obvious chest. If you go for other things, like just a random thing in a corner, you might actually get the most valuable item that's in the place. Tip number three, don't skip the slow parts. And I'll explain this as I run for my life. So I just came back from exploring. I'm completely out of ammo and these things are chasing me. So when entering a ship, you have the option to board the ship or skip the cockpit directly. And I highly recommend not skipping the cockpit. Captain on deck. 
And the reason for that is, is that if you always use the quick time events and the fast traveling, then the game turns into this highly fragmented quick time experience where you lose the sense of space and time. Ready for action, Captain. Okay, so, so the simple thing of me going in through the back of the ship, then walking through the ship and the AI crewmates acknowledging my presence and just spending time in the ship as in, like they're living in it, that create, gives you a sense of time and space and continuity as you play through the game. Just slowly walking back to your ship, taking a breather after the dangerous situation, perhaps looting, uh, sorting your loot somewhere. I can actually show you how to decorate your ship. Okay, let's say I got this sushi pack as a trophy or something, so I drop it. Okay, now if you want to place it somewhere, you need to hold E by looking at it, not pressing, and then it starts moving. Now you can let go of E. You can use left mouse, right mouse to rotate it a bit. Let's say I want to put it next to my dashboard. I'll put it over here. Okay, now this loot item will persist until you open the ship editor. If you open the ship editor for any reason, any loose item will end up in a cargo hold. And the second example for the third point is that you should also not fast travel through cities. Like, take your time, take the trams, just walk around. And even if you don't get an interesting quest by just walking past an NPC, just NPCs walking around in a place or talking about different things and mentioning some details, something that helps with the world building, that, that's, that's also part of the game experience. And again, it, it, it reinforces the sense of time and space, so you're walking through a city before you go out to adventure somewhere. I used to know some of the mines on Sidonia. Get this, they came back with red eyes. You don't say! You can consider questing or experience in a game world. It's, it's similar to looting. Like in the, in the second example, when you go looting a place, you, of course, you expect to go to a place to get a the big chest at the end. But sometimes you find something else you didn't look for. Tip number four. Avoid quest markers if possible. Relatively early in the game, when you spend some time in New Atlantis, the guard is going to approach you and tell you about brownouts in the well, which is the underground part of the city. Now I have this quest, however, I don't have the quest markers active. And I recommend keeping them off for quests where the game tells you to investigate something in an area, where you get some wake and what to do. Okay, because this way you just don't chase a particular mark on the screen. You actually look around, okay, to whom should I talk? I wondered when the first time I came down, like which person should I talk to? So basically, explore the place, I talk to shopkeepers, I talk to random NPCs that I hoped would give me a hint towards the quest. And most of them were actually dead ends. However, I experienced situations or dialogues with people I wouldn't otherwise have experienced, and I would have probably intentionally avoided. So it's similar to looting, like the quest system. When you're looting a place, you go somewhere to expect to find something, but you also get sidetracked and you, you, you find other things that you wouldn't have found if you weren't looking for something else in that place. And it's the same for questing in this game. Because, because if, you're an, if you're an experienced um, player of role-playing games, then usually if you set yourself a goal, okay, I'm going to, I want to do this particular quest right now. And you can probably tell if you're used to the, this particular type of game, whether the NPC you're talking to is going to give you a quest, have a quest, or just be a shopkeeper or something else. And you might instinctively avoid certain characters just to not waste, quote-unquote, waste time on something that wouldn't further the quest. However, if you don't know which NPC is useful for the quest or not useful for the quest, then you get experiences and maybe dialogue that you remember three or four years after playing the game that you otherwise wouldn't even have checked out. And also recommend, unless you really have to, is to not use subtitles. 
because if you use subtitles, then you often end up reading the text the character is going to say, and you just click next because you already read the text. And then I think 70% of the voice performance of the game, you're just going to click through because you already read it. And then you're wasting a lot of potential from that game. Tip number five, play the game like a buffet. What I mean by that is spend 80% of the time dynamic content, 20% the less physicalized, the more scripted content. I'm going to show you an example with the passenger transport mission. A passenger transport in this game is it's barely physicalized enough so it feels like it's part of the game. Because the only sensation you have for transporting passengers is them being in your ship and reacting to you being in their presence. And I think the voice lines are for the most part well made and it really feels like they're passengers. To finish a slate I've been reading. Feel free to take the scenic route. How much longer before we arrive? And you might wonder if you do passenger missions often, and I told you in point three that you shouldn't spend you shouldn't skip the cutscenes, you shouldn't skip all the long stuff. Then you might say, well, what if we're doing passenger missions too much? Won't that get boring very quickly? And yes, it will get boring. And that's the point of point number five is that treat these passenger missions and especially city quests like the icing on the cake. Like the main part of the game, 80% should be the dynamic content, like exploring a planet, upgrading a ship, modding your weapons, doing science research or anything. 